Alright, welcome back to Let's Play Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon. So, now we're on the move. Let's head to Prologue 3. Last Prince Marth escaped Altia Castle with Sir Jagan and company at his side. However, this success would be little to him once he learned the cost. The boy's woes were just beginning. Kane, how are your wounds? You should rest. These scratches? It's my pride you're wondering, sire. And anyway, we must talk. There's a reason I've returned. Sire, I am... I am delivered to you His Majesty's last words. Last words? You don't mean... Father! My condolences, sire. The king died valiantly in the fields of Thra. The traitors took from him the divine blade Falchion and gave no quarter to those of our soldiers who remained. Yeesh. I... I see. So they're all dead. Father, too. Not a soul in Orishia will accept your offer. Prepare to die! Oh, brave words. It's really such a pity that I don't have the time to kill you all slowly. And now you die. Now while I have fallen, as Falchion's rightful heir, he has been born into greatness. Now, he must be great. Father, I will try. Sire, I... I cannot bear this! Failing to protect his majesty, then leaving my brothers to die, slinking away like some coward. This indignity is too much to bear. One day I will repay them in kind. I will avenge the fallen. I swear it! Kane, you speak for us both. When that day comes, we will punish them together. Gra, Dolor, all of them. Sire, we ought to pay a visit to these homes outside the castle. Hmm. Your countrymen love you. Perhaps they have you know that they may serve us. View, uh, this feature I really like. Viewing collective date. Collective attack range. When you want to view the attack range of all the enemies, just press the X button. Very friggin' handy. Now we have two more people to join that join us on our friendly escapade. Here we have Kane, Abel's brother, and he's a redhead. He starts off as a power type, but eventually he starts growing in speed and skill and the like. He's pretty cool, just like his bro. And Jagan Man! This is Jagan. He's a paladin. A cut above the other guys right now. He has marginally better stats than everyone here so far. Though, it's not going to stay that way for very long. All Jagan really is is going to serve as the, as the crutch for newbie players to get going. But once this chapter starts getting, go, getting going, Jagan's unfortunately going to lose his stride. Still, he's a formidable force where it counts. And being a paladin, he has high res. He also has manly spikes. Alright, let's get situated. Just cause you're seeing an enemy over here doesn't mean you should go run up to him like a fool. Lure him out and take him in down. Then go on and lure out the next. That's how we did it, I was a lad. Thanks, man. Something I really like about this game is how is how the text sounds. It's really refined and stuff. I really like the text in this game. Even though sources, even though some, I read some sources say that the story was streamlined for when it was low, the story was streamlined and condensed just a tiny bit when it was condensed over, when it was brought over to uh, localized, brought over to Europe. Who localized it first? Look, sire, not all of Cross might parry the castle. They left soldiers here outside. And also have no place to escape. Let's seize that fort across the water. Perhaps we can quash enemy reinforcements at the source. 
Hey, okay, that's basically giving you an overview of the map right there. So yeah, so that's what I've heard. Basically, Nintendo, when Nintendo of Europe first localized this game, they here's uh, talking about forests and how they affect movement terrain. They they uh condense the text a little. Though looking back to back between the translated text from FE3 and this game's text, there isn't much difference. I don't see it, but there isn't really much difference aside from what's said and aside from how things are said. I'm not seeing it. I'm really not seeing it. Sir Jake is a paladin, a champion of Altia. He made me old, but he's as strong as an ox. Still, you can't have a champion like him do everything. That's not fair at all, your would be future champions. Let your other units fight and gain experience, or you may find yourself with a real fix down the line. That's basically giving that's give, that's basically game giving a nice hint saying, don't overabuse Jaken or you're going to regret it. I guess I should probably say that part of what part of what comes through uh Part of what comes through um Damn it! The battle sprites, there we go. That was what I was gonna talk about. Like, what was I talking about again? Part of people don't like, why people don't like the battle missions in this game is because most of the most of the classes lack uh, definitive palettes. It's a minor gripe, sure, but it's a gripe nonetheless. And whoop! Ah, I personally don't care. Another thing I really like about this game is how fast it rolls. Like you can, like you really just zip by this game. Once you have the speed settings at the fight at the highest point, you really you can just really zip by this game. Something this Fire Emblem also features, and no other Fire Emblem has done this, has done this ever, is the ability to skip enemy turns. A huge, 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 huge boon. When things get long and boring. But when you set things to fast, it just goes kinda goes on normal speed anyway. So, while not necessary, very handy. If you get hurt, rest your spell out of four. Short stay there, you'll be feeding whole hails ever. Basically telling you that you should rest on forts to recover your HP. I guess you should probably go with the top screen, uh, it shows your stats. You got all your basic stuff. Level, HP, your attack, your critical, your hit, your evasion, your movement, your attack range, why is it slowing down all of a sudden? Strength, magic, something strength there, something right there. Strength and magic are split. Thanks to uh, pretty much recent in uh, the Tele series, where strength and magic has gone back to being split, where what, where in the original and the remake, strength and magic were one stat: power, skill, speed, luck, defense, resistance, your weapon levels, your items. You can only have five items in this. The character can only have five items in this, which is a bit of a bit of annoyance, considering that. Well, I think you can only have five items in the original as well. Yeah, in the remake, you're allowed to have four weapons and four items. Which is something Path of Rage took to heart, and personally, I like that system. Having four weapons and four items. Javelins and hand axes first weapons to let you attack both up close and from a short distance away. I'm telling you about how javelins and hand axes work. Very simple, basic stuff. So yeah, the problem, one of the problems is that while strength and magic are indeed split up, this game does not take advantage of that. Oh, we missed. Which kind of pisses me off, because I would love to, because I would love to see mage knights in this game. 
Worse still, the sequel still doesn't take advantage of this, even though it does a much better job with, its new, with uh, showing off what it can do with its new classes and stuff. HP, skill. That's... a bit of a... that's, that's a pretty much a big nitpick for me, because I love my Mage Knights. Why don't I have my Mage Knights? Weapons are indestructible, you know. They have limits. When a weapon's drop to reach zero, that's it. No more weapons. We should keep an eye on those numbers. That guy tells you that weapons break eventually. As you get close, mages, that complicates things. They don't need to get as close as close to you as harm. We need to approach carefully. And here they're telling us about mages and how you should probably be careful around them. As well as you should. As this game... Whoop! Hand X. I like the hand axe animation in this game. I don't know why, I just do. As well, anyway, about mages. As well, you should be as, uh, terrified of them. Since this game is so hold true to old tradition, it still pretty much follows logic that resistance is pretty much an almost a uh, nondescript stat. Like, you'll be lucky if you run into a character that ha actually has a resistance stat. Like, Jagan? The only the, the Jigan, that six re, that six resistance is pretty much thanks to his paladin is pretty much entirely thanks to his paladin base because paladins have a base res of six. And hardly anyone ever gets resistance. Even mages in this game barely get res, which is which is I'm sorry, but kind of dumb. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of dumb. Hey, yeah, that's how they worked. Caught you. Eh, let's show off. Let's show off Jake and Man and his badassness. Caught you. A lot of the animations of this feel like they're more uh, realistic versions of the G of the GBA ones, and I like that. Again, a lot of people don't, but I do. So, in in in, in, in. my opinion, and it's all opinion's sake. Anyway, back to mages. Uh, yeah, uh, you should watch out when around them. Well, because even though generic mages don't get a lot of magic. No, ha mages still hurt because you have no, you almost have no res to block their damage. So, even if the, even if the magic is still weak, a powerful, powerful magic is still powerful magic when you don't have resistance to defend against it. And that's bad. Well, I guess I should try to talk about miscellan some miscellaneous things, like how archetypes are set up, since this is pretty much the first Fire Emblem game. So let's talk more about Cain and Abel, the, bro the brothers Cavalier. They pretty much set the archetype. Those guys pretty much set the archetype for being the red-haired and green-haired Cavalier, Cavalier Duro, which has pretty much been prominent in nearly every Fire Emblem game since since their induction. I think the only Fire Emblem games that haven't really taken advantage of this are Fire Emblem Gaiden and Fire Emblem Thracia 776. And it's sort of and it's sort of downplayed in Thracia 776. Ow. Basically the two basically the difference between the two is that the red the red headed cavalier and the green haired cavalier well, they don't have to be necessarily related, or usually either, or usually either, um, close buds, rivals, or in this case, actual siblings. I like how they tell, I like how they tell, sometimes tell you that some characters, some enemies won't even move, and they'll tell you in the status screen. That's actually a very helpful hint. I like that they did that. Very nice. 
basically one part of one one dude is basically focused on power and the other focuses on uh, speed and skill. In this game, Kane focuses on speed and skill, while Abel focuses on power. Although how they start may suggest otherwise. That's how it worked in the original and the remake as well. So take that as you will. As for Jagan, as said, he's supposed to be the crutch character. That players that players can use to make make certain parts of the game easier. But after a while he loses his novelty. They won't be able to keep up with their stronger units. Oh, that's a critical hit. As the Jagan archetype, that pretty much follows on to uh pretty much everyone. Pretty much almost every Fire Emblem game, except Gaiden. I believe pretty sure Gaiden is the only Fire Emblem game that doesn't really follow this. And it's sort of downplayed in some other games. We'll talk more on it a bit later. There, that ought to do for the enemy soldiers around here. Maladus! Why aren't you with my sister? Did you leave her someplace safe? Princess said us will not be joining us. She has elected to stay at the castle. Hold, sire! Where are you going? Where do you think? Stop! Sire, consider from why the princess would go so far as to lie as to lie to you to ensure your escape. Your sister knows that you are the future of Altia. Nay, the whole land! His last words were as follows. Tell my son that I leave the future of Altia and our continent in his hands. I'm... our future. Sire, you must live. Drink deeply now of these injustices. Sup on these slights they serve. Remember them! One day you will lead us back here to avenge the fallen and reclaim Altia in their names. Then, it seems my life is no longer mine to hazard. In your veins flow the blood of a hero, the blood of Henri. You are a son of House Arcania, and the sole heir to the Falchion, our only hope of defeating Amadeus, Emperor of Dolor. Sire, weren't you? Were to my power, I would have you choose your own path, and I'm afraid your path has chosen you. Deep words from Marv to ingest. That's all pretty much one big video, and I suppose I don't want to drag it on too long. So I guess we'll say I guess we'll do the next part in the next video. So uh, we'll conclude the prologue then. See you later, guys.